In this video, we're going to show you how you can easily set up social media sharing buttons on your WordPress website. We're going to use a plugin to do this, and one plugin that a lot of people like to use is Jetpack. Jetpack requires a connection to WordPress.com, which means you need to have an account there. But we're not going to use Jetpack for this video. We have actually had another video where we've shown you how to do it with Jetpack, though, if that's what you want to do, and you can check that out by clicking on the annotation. Uh, we're actually going to use a plugin called Simple Share Buttons Adder. Now, there's a number of plugins that you can use, but I personally feel that that one is the best of the options available. So we're going to go into the dashboard and add that new plugin right now. So as mentioned, it's called Simple Share Buttons Adder. We'll just install it and click OK, as is always the case when installing a new plugin on WordPress. And once it's downloaded and installed, we're going to click activate. So the plugin's been activated now, and as you can see, we've got the regular plugin activated message up the top, uh, but we've also got another message saying that we need to actually configure it before we can actually go through and use that. So I'm going to click that now, and if you need to get back to this screen at any time, you can go into settings and then into share buttons. It's a really powerful plugin, and there's a phenomenal range of options available to us here. So. We're going to put it on the home page and posts just because that way I can show you how they're actually going to look. You can choose where you would like the buttons to appear, whether you'd like them before, after, or you know, in both of those places in regards to the content. You're usually using after is the most common implementation there, so we're going to leave it as that. We can change what text we'd like there, and it says don't be shellfish, which is obviously a pretty cool pun. and then you can actually choose the image set you'd like. And again, there's you know a great range of options you can use there. We're just gonna leave it on some, some macro for the moment. Uh, and that brings us down to the area where we're actually going to choose the buttons we want on this particular sharing area. So we're gonna put in email, Google, Pinterest, Reddit, Twitter, and Tumblr for now. I will also put down Facebook too. So then we'll just click Save Changes. And now we can hop over and actually have a look at the website to see how that looks. There you go. So we've got the text there and then we've got the various sharing icons as we've defined in the settings before. You can see that because we've got quite a number of them, it actually goes down into the next line. So you could remove the text if you wanted to do that or you could remove some of those buttons or you could just add more buttons in order to pad that out. So we'll just jump back into there now. I'm going to show you one of the other cool options. We'll just choose ribbons for now, just to give you an idea of the various options that you get with this plugin. So we'll go back and click that, and you can see you have a, quite a nice flat looking uh, array of buttons there. So we'll go back into the simple share buttons settings, and then we'll go into styling. And as you can see, you can choose between assisted styling and custom CSS. We're just going to use assisted styling for now. You can choose the button size, so the width, and where you would like them to be. So we might as well just choose center. And then we can also choose how much padding we would like around the images. Six pixels is usually you know, more than enough. It's, it's a good number to choose. Then you can choose the sharing text color if you'd like. You can also choose the font. I'm gonna just say inherit from my website because I personally feel that font that is the default font doesn't really look in line with the rest of the website. We might even just choose to knock the size down to 15 pixels, for instance. And then you can also choose the style of the font weight you want, bold or normal or light. We're just gonna leave it on default for the moment. And just below that, we can choose where we want the text to be in relation to the buttons. So you can choose left, that's normal. Maybe you wanna choose above to keep it separated a little bit. That's absolutely fine as well. And then you can go and add a little bit more style to the actual container that these buttons lived in. I'm not gonna make any changes to that for the moment, but I will save changes to save the changes that I've already made. So we'll go back to the website and we'll just take a look at you know how that appears now. It's a bit cleaner, we've got a, an updated font there, as you can see, it's a bit smaller, and then we've got all the buttons and they appear in one row, which definitely looks a lot better than when we had them uh, falling down as we did before. You can also choose to show the share count here in counter settings. So for the sites where it's actually possible to show how many times it's been shared, you can turn that on. It will slow down page loads a little bit, so you can leave it on or off. 
we'll just leave it off uh, for the moment because we won't actually have any shares available for us to show any users. And then you can choose if you just want to show it once and the actual style of the counter. I'm just going to leave that as blue for now. Then we're just going to take a quick look in the advanced settings. So the first option we have is to open links in a new window and you can leave that on. That's the default. It's probably the best way to do it is do that so it doesn't interfere with the person browsing your website. You can choose if you want to have the actual text there. So this text here, it says don't be shellfish. If you want to actually have that linking through to that website, it's up to you. It's not necessary. But if you want to support the plugin because it's free, it's a good way of uh, showing your support for it. You can then go through and just customize a few little bits and pieces such as email text and Twitter text. So basically just what you want people to have there by default when they're actually sharing a post or anything on your website by those means. And the same again, you, know, you can put in your Flutter user ID and as well as some custom text for buffer. Uh, but otherwise that's really all you need to know when it comes to setting up this plugin and getting those share buttons on your website. You don't even really need to go into style encounters or advanced, but they are there in case you do want to utilize those settings. So I hope this is a useful way that you can use to get these buttons on your website. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask in the comments below.